God of War is about a father and his son trying to carry out their wife and mother's final wish. Yeah, there's giants and undead and enormous turtles and a talking head strapped to your behind, and also you and your son are gods, but if we strip the story all the way to its barest of bare bones, it's a buddy road trip from your house to the highest peak in all the realms to scatter your wife's ashes. That's your goal right from the beginning, and that's your goal right up until the very end. But of course, the interesting part isn't the destination, though in this case it is pretty interesting, but instead the journey. Today we're going to look at designing invisible scenes. This is a technique used quite a lot in television. The best example that comes to mind in recent times is episode four, of season three of Mr. Robot, in which seemingly the whole near hour long episode is filmed continuously without any cuts or breaks. Of course this isn't the case, it would be almost impossible to do on that scale with such quality that we have come to expect. The same goes for God of War. God of War seemingly has zero loading screens at all. Of course that isn't true, not one bit, especially for a console exclusive title. But even then, even with the bulkiest of PCs with enough RAM to simulate lice in a horse's mane, or someone just having a good time with a Ubisoft game, couldn't have enough memory to store 4K textures, AI scripts, huge open worlds with dense foliage, and the rest, without having to delete some latent files after a while. The interesting part, though, is how the designers of God of War made these loading screens seamless, and invisible to the player. Let's rattle off a few examples. Remember when you played God of War and you had to squeeze your big muscled chest through a tiny crack in the mountainside? You may have felt claustrophobic as Kratos scraped himself through, slowly and purposefully. That right there, that was a loading screen. Loading in the area that you were about to enter and deloading the area that you had just played through. Or maybe you remember that moment when your son fell ill after the fight with Thor's sons and you had to reluctantly dash back to Freya's house for help. You may even be able to cast your mind back to Kratos, uncharacteristically pacing back and forth on a very long ride up to her house, nervous and full of dread. Yep, another loading screen. Finally, we can look at the most obvious one, the one when fast traveling. Instead of going to a loading screen, you instead wander through the branches of the tree until the game is ready to let you enter in the newly loaded level. Every game nowadays has fast traveling. But Bethesda were, to my recollection in any case, one of the first to make a loading screen interactable with Skyrim. They displayed models on screen for you to be able to interact with whilst you were waiting for the level to load in. I mention Skyrim's loading screen not because it was one of the first to take on this technique of occupying the player, but in essence God of War is doing the exact same thing, but instead of cutting to black, something which if you have watched the Raising Kratos feature length on YouTube, you would know that the creative director of God of War hates fading to black. So instead of cutting to black, the camera that's behind Kratos stays on him, as he enters either sparsely modelled and textured areas, for example the tree during fast travel, or moves close enough to Kratos to restrict the player's view so the world can deload around them. This, of course, isn't just a technical feat, but also a cinematic feat as well. But that alone isn't enough. If we actually just stripped those moments back, they would be just like Skyrim's loading screens, just a bit prettier. Maybe with an argument to say that they were better for immersion, but with Skyrim's law building and their loading screens giving you a closer look at the models in the game, that could be a long argument. Anyway, what makes God of War's loading screens different, but more importantly, seamless, is through each loading screen evoking an emotion in the player, which in turn distracts them from the true purpose of the scene. I talked a little bit about the first two examples, but let's just stick to the lift scene as Kratos carries his ill son to Freya. In this scene, the player isn't just able to infer that Kratos is worried and vulnerable, something which you can do throughout most of the game but they can see these emotions in him as well. 
This, to me, was incredibly striking and frankly, a bit off-putting. It was almost a polar opposite to what I saw Kratos to be, all the way up to that point in the story. Kratos was cold, hard and unforgiving, but in this instance, the walls of his outer shell began to crumble, and as the lift took longer and longer than was even probably logically possible in that world space, I was fixated on Kratos, watching his every movement as my feelings connected with his. That is how to create an invisible scene, and God of War is absolutely full of them. There are two main other design choices that helps make God of War as seamless and immersive as it is, the camera and the prompts. I'm not going to go into the camera too much as it's relatively simple and has been covered by many YouTubers before me so I just won't bother. Just if you don't know, the camera never cuts, not once. The only way you can tell something is a scripted cutscene and not gameplay is whether or not you can control the camera or not. Which is interesting, but instead I'd rather spend this time talking about the prompts. In a lot of AAA games nowadays, aside from a few exceptions, it has become unimaginable to trust the player to remember how to interact with the world. This is partly down to just wanting games to be as accessible as possible, which makes sense, but mainly it is down to sacrificing good and clear level and art design for realism. If we take a look at some parts of God of War where the seams begin to tear slightly, you can see that it is relatively easy and logical to spot where you need to start climbing walls, as God of War uses the same technique as the Uncharted series of making interactable parts of the environment yellow. But once you begin to climb the wall, sure in a lot of places it's well designed and makes sense, but when it comes to jumping from ledge to ledge specifically, or ledge to the ground as well, the game doesn't trust the player to know where to jump without a prompt showing you where to jump and what button to press. And to be honest, who will blame them? It almost for sure came up in QA testing and that's why the decision was made. To be honest, when climbing I spent a lot of my time just trying to find the prompts instead of where I needed to go, because I would look around and try to jump where I thought it made sense but nothing would happen. Then I would find out that I actually needed to jump somewhere else, not through intuitive level design, but from a big circle on the screen. Now this sounds like I'm bashing God of War's level design and their heavy reliance on big prompts on the screen, but I am just highlighting a very small yet necessary design decision that you as a designer yourself may have to face when trying to create a seamless and immersive experience. Because what you have to remember, the main thing always has to be, can the player play this and is it fun? If both of those aren't yes, then it doesn't matter how seamless or immersive your game is if no one finishes it. As a side note though on the development of God of War, one scene that they had to tear rather late in development, very very late in development actually, was to do with the Leviathan Axe and the UI. Originally the UI, including all the menus and sub-menus, were to be located and accessed entirely via the Axe. Which is a cool concept as it made it so not only are there no in-game cuts, but the player never cuts away from the action themselves either. But it just didn't work. And as you have seen from the recent release of Death Stranding, UI can go a long, but also a very, very short way. Anyway, back to talking about prompts. What God of War does incredibly well with their prompts are actually during the big combat set pieces of the game. For example, in the first fight of the game against Balder, you get to the point where you are next to a fallen tree, and without a prompt on the screen, you know that you can pick that tree up and hit him with it. Why do you, as the player, know that? Well, there's a design reason for it. The game starts off with you being prompted to hit a tree with an axe, this is the first thing you do. But on the second hit, it doesn't prompt you to continue hitting it. Kratos will just stand there until you hit the trigger again to hit it. Thus teaching the player that promptless actions are a thing in this game. Then once you've cut down the tree, you are prompted to pick up the tree and Kratos is on the same side of the tree as he is during the fight against Balder. 
That's really smart design there and probably wouldn't have been so effective if those two moments weren't less than an hour apart. Also, one of the main reasons why it's effective is because it includes two design principles being repetition and having the player have to do something in order to progress early on in a safe environment. Now, during this video, I've talked about how God of War achieves the seamless design, but why is it important? And why is it good for the player? Which is, of course, the most important question. Firstly, it is important because it piles onto the trend of cinematic games leading the charge to bridge the gap in story quality between movies and video games. But instead of doing an order 1886, in which most of it is cutscenes and the whole experience is just a bit short and a bit naff, they went the other way and turned the gameplay into a cinematic experience where it always feels like there is a cameraman over the shoulder of Kratos, always ready to get the next shot. So instead of you playing along this tedious, mindless gameplay loop, you are instead constantly in that cutscene. You may not find this personally as important as me, but for the industry, this is a very big step and not one that should be considered unworthy of praise. Secondly, why is this good for the player? In one word, immersion. And specifically about God of War, it's not necessarily how it improves the immersive experience, because in a lot of ways it's no different than any other game. But instead, it's how it protects the player from easy and quick immersion breakers like loading screens and cuts to black and whatnot. However, like I said before, this should never be at the cost of the player. As a designer, you should always strive for greatness and innovation in your field, but remember who you are in the end doing it for. Thank you all so much for watching. I can't believe the support that I got on my Death Stranding video that I uploaded a couple of weeks ago, and I am grateful for your continued support in my endeavour to share with you my journey through my video game education. I also have my own studio called Crab Studios. If you would like to find out more information about our current board game in development, then please head over to our social media in the description. Thanks, and I'll see you next week where my case study is going to be The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild.